Thank you very much for having me. Um, let me talk about the power of connection, as was introduced, and in particular, about mathematics and the glass filter. You may not know what the glass filter is yet, but you're about to. So I'm going to start, actually, somewhere else. Bob Moses, whose photograph is here, was a very important civil rights leader in the 60s. He played a large role in getting voters in Mississippi, black voters, registered. It wasn't easy. Here is the poster from the Ku Klux Klan wanting him dead or alive. And this is real. From their point of view, dead would have been better. He was quite successful. And much later in life, he took another tack. In the early, um, in the later part of the century, um, and in the year 2000, he started and ran in Cambridge, actually, initially, and then all over the country, the Algebra Project. Many of his civil rights colleagues thought this was very odd. Okay. Um, he believed that mathematical literacy is a civil right. And here is his statement. And realize this is somebody who really did do organizing in Mississippi himself and could have died for it. He believed that the, pro that the um, lack of literacy in urban and rural areas is a huge problem. I agree. Okay. Uh, mathematics for many people, probably not you, but for many people in the world, is a filter. It filters them out of majors. It filters professionals out of being at the table. Okay. It doesn't have to be this way. Mathematics could be, can be, and sometimes is, a pump, not a filter. This is an attainable civil right. Okay. Let me just look to back up the point at Harvard. So, Harvard has concentrations rather than majors, because it's Harvard. Okay. Um, of, the of the majors, about half of them require mathematics. The ones that do not require mathematics are almost all in the arts. If you want to measure in economics or in, or in something similar, in engineering or go to medical school, you have to do mathematics. Before you get the wrong idea, let me say that I'm not advocating that HKS should only take people who have strong quant backgrounds or that we should take the quant out of the courses. I am advocating, I am asking how to teach mathematics effectively to lots of people. Okay. And the US and much of the world could do a better job. Here are some particular aspects of teaching that would be important to you to remember and to take into account. First of all, mathematics is a very vertical subject. That means that pieces build on other pieces. Not paying attention to that part of it can leave you lost. I'm sure that you may know somebody who went to school at some point and missed a week or a month because they were sick or because they moved house or because something. And when they got back, they understood nothing. Okay. Unless somebody does something about the nothing, that kid will be lost for a while, maybe forever. Understanding in mathematics, it's essential to know, to understand the lower branches, the lower floors. <coughs> Pratham in India, has a, 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 or a, talks about teaching at the right level. This is extremely wise and important. Um, let me think about from the point of view of, an, of a teacher, not from the point of view of a psychologist. What does it mean to understand something? I'm not thinking about the neurological connections, although those are indeed important. But think about mathematical things. Do you remember them 
or economics or, what, or social sciences? Do you remember them in words? Do you remember them in pictures? There are several different ways of thinking about everything. Um, symbols, algebra, uh, charts, data, verbal descriptions. Um, you've seen many of them. This, uh, thanks to the Germans, is an old German note. It has on it, though it's very small, the normal distribution and its formula. So there's a graph and an a algebraic expression. And here's the z-table that you might have used, which is the same thing in numbers. I would suggest, and there's considerable evidence in this way um, that we've looked at, that being able to translate between different uh, uh, visualizations, between different um, representations, is what builds understanding. So it's being able to move between these different things and see how they illuminate each other. That gives us understanding. Another aspect that helps build understanding, that helps build uh, depth of knowledge, is curiosity. Most of you have some things, I'm sure m most of you have lots of things that you are curious about. This is true of students at all ages. Think about how when kids come into elementary school, probably many of you, like me, drove our parents crazy by asking, why, why, why? They're curious, curious, curious. People who are curious remember things much longer. Those who are curious also are, they are slower to solve problems because they want to understand every step. They're not just going for the answer. Curiosity is extremely useful. The difficult part is you can't mandate curiosity. Try saying to a kid, be curious about this. Nothing happens. Okay. You can, however, find and harness people's curiosity. Ordering people to be curious has no effect. But finding what they are curious about and weaving it into what you do works. Let me say a few words about um, curiosity. One part of it has to do with making connections. Okay. One important part. Some of my students here told me this was teaching by conspiracy. <laughs> by which they meant that I taught them things that they saw used in other classes, and they saw things in other classes that I often used too. Uh, thank you to Todd, I have used some of his work in my classes, and it's helpful in both ways. One is my students here and everywhere else are curious about many things, some of them Todd's work. And secondly, the reinforcing from the quant classes also gives, I think, some depth of understanding to what other faculty are doing. So conspiracies are very helpful. Um, thanks to uh, Ricardo, I have also used materials from his courses. <laughs> and I hope you do not mind, but that linking together courses is extremely important. Linking together the real world is extremely important. Um, having your teaching reflect the culture and interests of your students is also important. Here's an example that took me slightly by surprise. Here's an apple pie. What is this doing here? I had a student at one point from Ghana, and along with colonialism, Ghana had got British textbooks. Every British child learns fractions through apple pies. He has never seen an apple pie. And 
he learned, well, as far as he was concerned, they just lived in math books. Okay. When he came to Harvard as a freshman, he spent part of freshman year over the wake vacation in my house, and I discovered he was very deter disturbed by the Harvard apple pies, which looked like this in the freshman union, not like the ones he'd seen before. So that was an example that was perhaps not the way it was supposed to work. <laughs> One more piece. Teaching backwards is helpful. What does backwards mean? Um, the traditional way of doing mathematics is to teach the theory or the formulas or the general picture first, and then do the applications, if you are lucky. <laughs> I'm suggesting that we do it the other way around. First, the application, and out of the application, draw the theory. Now, if you ask a mathematician, they'll certainly tell you that you're putting the cart before the horse. Okay. Um, my suggestion is to always keep the cart first. It is true that connections for many people perhaps not the mathematicians, but for many, many people in the world, the connection between mathematics and things that people care about is crucial. Okay. And as a picture, I would like to suggest these are all pieces that are quite mathematical, and which, if students start to see the real world as full of quantitative things, they soon will find mathematical wings. Here's Claudia Golden, here's a corruption, here is the ICC, and last of all, here is AI. Thank you very much. <laughs>